good, you know. Um, five weeks out, everything's good. Everything's going to be good. Mm-hmm. Now, you're fighting on April the 20th. How long have you trained up to now for the fight? Like, how many weeks is your training camp? Okay, that's good. Now, you've already marked your appearance as an established world-class fighter with your win against Kevin Cunningham. How are you received by the US crowd, in your opinion? Because on one side, we get people saying that they don't like some of the comments that you've made, but at the same time, I see a lot of Americans who enjoy who enjoy you as a fighter and say that you're really shaking up the heavyweight division in a way that's not been done for a while. What's your opinion of how the American press and how the American people perceive you? Yeah, well, of, of course, um, of course, it seems like it seems up to now that it's a bit of a love hate relationship. They love to watch you, but um, for for similar reasons, the many fighters because they, um, they they want to see you get beat. But if you keep winning, you keep winning. Now, of course, you beat a world class. Op- Sorry, what was that? class opposition last time round in Kevin Johnson you've got a bigger fight coming up with Steve Cunningham but David Price unfortunately fell at the first hurdle in the second round against Tony Thompson what did you make of that was that a big surprise to you? <laughs> yeah, well, no, it, it, it's it's it is of it's a it's of course a shame when you get such a talented fighter who doesn't seem to have the chin to take a punch. It's unfortunate. Now, is this fight still likely to happen at some point? You know, if he can rebuild and get himself ranked again, then why not? It's an easy payday for me, and uh, it's probably going to be a big fight. You know, he can still be a big fight. Um, sure, he's going to be back and. Uh, Knocking people over again. Mm-hmm. Now, fights that have fell through fire have been with big European names such as the undefeated Bites of, you got Ruslan Shigayev, the former world heavyweight champion. As a fighter, yeah. is it really frustrating when fights like this fall through? It is, you know, because they've both been fighting those top guns and so-called good guys. They don't want to uh, step into the plate. They've got no balls, in other words. They don't want to fight, you know, that's what I tried with. It's been offered a lot of money to take a fight, and uh, it's received a lot of times. So he's got no chance, and he knows that, so I don't blame him really. But the, uh, the other fellow, that boy, sort of young, undefeated puncher, he should have took the fight, but, you know, the desire is against it, and um, good luck to him in what they're going to do. But, you know, it's frustrating to, uh, to be training for a fight, and then all of a sudden he's pulled out. Well, is it, is it just a case of keep winning who wants to fight you and then win the title and eventually these guys will have to fight you? Is that is that what your mindset is? To be honest with you, I'm not really interested in any other fights, any other heavyweights at the minute. I've got Steve Cunningham to think about because I'll laugh at Steve Cunningham when I'm, I may as well go and get myself in the job centre back in Wuzzy Show. So, you know, I'm not going to take my eye off the ball, you know. Probably it's the hardest fight in my life. People say this guy, I know we're saying a lot of shit about him in the press conference trade under his skin, but you know, the small, smaller these guys are, the usually the harder they are to hit and nail down. It's not the fact of um, if I hit him and hurt him, it's the fact of how long is it going to take me to do so. Yeah, it's hard to, uh, to nail down these, these smaller fighters. 
This is no way an easy fight by any shadow of imagination. This is a very hard fight, in my opinion. Oh. I'd rather fight someone seven foot ten and thirty five stone than fight someone small who moves. Yeah, that's um, no, no, it's, it's good to hear that from you. That's um. That, that's good. Um, so it is a challenge for you. Now this guy's a former world champion, and recently coming off his last fight, he um, he, he lost a controversial decision to Thomas Adamek, who by many accounts is the best heavyweight without a title, or the best heavyweight who's not Carl Klitschko. Did, did did you see the performance? Have you watched a lot of Steve Cunningham's fights? Yeah, I watched the fight. Yeah, um, it was a stick and move boxing contest. You know, both good boxers. Um... And it, it was a long time decision for Adamek, but um, he just needs a chance to redeem himself in this fight, doesn't he? Of course. Now, is this the year, Tyson? Is this the year that you're going to get the title shot, in your opinion? Probably not, you know. Uh, what do I've got to do to get a title shot? I don't know, you know. I'm not really interested in a title shot, you know. They're fucking, fucking me around, left, right and centre. These fucking clutch gold bitches, yeah. I'm sick to death of hearing about them. Real are dickheads, that's all they are, yeah? I've got no respect for them at all. I think complete wankers. I can't stand the sight of them. And if there was here now, I'd draw off on it one right in the face of the big old run right up or something. You know, that's how much right to face in me. Um, taking all the bullshit, saying oh, there was no one to fight and all that. I'm ready to fight, taking shit opponents on and uh, going down the houses. But you know what it is, they'll retire and I'll take over the division, you know? They're not going to fight me. I'm, I've got any mind already, so I'm not really interested. You're, you're interested. I, I, think, I think they might fight me if they could pay me twenty grand or something like that. Like, just get me over there, fucking being a sponge boy or something like that. I don't know. But they're not going to fight me in a real fight. No way. So for you, you you're 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 looking at picking up one of the vacancies. Yes, sir. You're looking at picking up one of the vacancies once they've retired. 100%. They, they're not going to fight me, I know that, so I'm not even interested in a good go. Let them have uh, a little era, finish it up on whatever they're going to do, and I'll, uh, I'll take over from there. Mm-hmm. Now, Steve Cunningham, what do you make of him as a fighter? Do you think that um, do you think that he's going to pose you a lot of problems, or do you think this is going to be another straightforward win? No, it's not, definitely not a straightforward fight. It's, gonna, it's, a, it's a big problem fight, this is. When I first heard about Steve Cunningham, I thought, fuck Steve Cunningham, yeah. He's got nothing to offer, he's got no titles, he's got nothing, yeah. He's not, he's not a good man, he's hard to hit, he's awkward, and he hit the base. You know, I'm coming to the terms and I've got a fight, you know. Whoever they put in front of me, I've got a fight. And it's really an exciting uh, fight, you know, because it's not, all, uh, it's not written in stone what's going to happen. I might kick it myself, you never know. So, uh, boxing's boxing, and heavyweight boxing's heavyweight boxing. And if I leave the team out there to get knocked off, I'm sure Steve Cunningham's more than capable of knocking it off for me. Mm hmm. No. Once I'm not on the E game, and I don't uh, box 100%, I'm able to miss him 100 times, run out of steam, and fucking chase him around the ring all night, missing all night. You know, awkward fighters. The, the Americans are nothing like a British fighter. British fighters are shit. They can't fight. The American fighters, in other, other, other words, can fight. Yeah? A shit journeyman will come over and beat the British champion. That's, that's how much I think about British boxing. It's just a totally different ball game, you know what I mean? It's not. And some of these fighters, yeah, they're never going to get a chance to do any good. They're never, ever going to get a chance to fight for a title. It's just hang around the gyms and probably fight for five dollars or something like that, I don't know. But, um, you know, it's not always that good to us. You know how many tickets you can sell, isn't it? Because mm -hmm. let's face it, if you can't fight at all, but you can sell all the tickets, you're going to make it in boxing, aren't you? But if you can fight and you can't sell tickets, then you're fucked. I agree. I completely agree. Now, you're, you're very young. You're a complete baby for a heavyweight in the position that you're in. In 10 years' time, what's the main thing that you want to achieve? Obviously, you want to win a title, but what, what's the one thing that motivates you? Is it holding the title for a long time? Is it unifying the belts? Is it pound for pound top 10? What, what are you looking for, Tyson? I'm looking to be fucking financially secure forever. Yeah. Because if I can't fight, I'm not going to fight. 
on their own game and doing the best they can really. I don't give a shit about the rest. Top 10, fucking pound for pound, they're all that shit. As far as I'm concerned, I'm pound for pound number one as it is. Because if Floyd Mayweather or any of these knobheads want to step in the ring with me, I'd gladly knock them out for you. So, you know, it's not my fault they're small, is it? And I'm big. So, all that doesn't mean shit to me, pound for pound and all that. You can't pound for pound it because they're not, they're not heavyweight and we're not lightweight. So, in my opinion, it's a load of rubbish. Uh, that's, a, that's a fair point, fair enough. Now, now you've had a few crosswords with Cunningham, but it all seems banter. Is there genuine animosity between the two, like, like there is with David Price? To be honest with you, I, I, I couldn't really give a shit what he's done or what he's going to do. Animosity is anything. I've got a job to do on April the 20th, and I intend to do it. All that animosity, problems outside the ring, don't mean nothing, does it? Because what I go in there is business. Um, if I have to stand in the middle of the ring and throw one jab pair around to win, then that's what I'll do. I'm not going to jeopardise my future earnings for going in there and fuck around with some idiot. Then the heart get the better of me. This is business, and it's a strict business, and that's what I intend to make it, strictly business. Okay, on that note, Tyson, I'm, um, I'm happy to speak to your uncle. Thank you very much, I appreciate it. And All right, good I'll, on. I'll put um, him on. All right, thank you very much. Yeah, well, Okay, Peter Fiore, how's it going? Yeah, it's going good, thank you. Yeah, um, it's great to speak to Tyson. I've wanted to speak to him for a while now. Are you happy with his progress this camp, being his trainer? Um, yeah, it's um, a little bit different. So we've got to come over here and uh, get settled in. Get used to the uh, time changes. So that's set us back about 10 days, really. But apart from that, with the press conferences, he's... Uh, we're stuck in now every day, we good to go. That's brilliant, that's good to hear. Now, you, he's, you've really done a good job with this guy. Since you've took over, he's improved a lot, his jab's got a lot better, and his footwork for a guy as big as him is, is, is really something. Yeah. Um, do you still see considerable holes in his game? I'll just repeat that, because there's some traffic going by. Just, yeah. uh, in what, in his game, sorry? Do you see any considerable gaps in his game? Is there still a lot of gaps to fill? Well, there's always improvements to be made, and you know we're working on them constantly. So uh, you know, you know, bear in mind, he's only coming to his own now, isn't he? He's 24, coming 25. So in the in a lot of young as weight, but the same to finish that, it's going to be absolutely crazy. He's got loads of talent and loads more to show. And every fight you see him in, you'll see something a little extra every time. Mm -hmm. He's developing every fights. Now, what do you make of Cunningham as a fighter? Do you, do you think this is going to be a difficult fight for Tyson? Because a lot of people are saying this is a, consider a considerable step up in class. Do you, do you see a convincing win for Tyson here? Do you think it's going to be scrapper? No, he's a step up in class. I'm not interested in what people have got to say. Cunningham's a dangerous woman. If you load up on Cunningham, you'll miss him all day long. And he'll just cut your face off. training camps based on his opponent or are you one of the sort of trainers who has the mentality of teach him, teach him to improve his own game and he can box how he wants in the ring because you get some trainers that like tailor make training camps to suit a certain opponent well obviously you know yeah we have got our training camps to work to the opponent because every opponent's got a different style you know every opponent's different so um we are getting sparring partners liking it, liking into pulling up because we need speed and agility, you know. It's, uh, so obviously we're training for that purpose. So to say um, we're training normally every fight would be ludicrous to say because, of course, you've got to adapt your style accordingly, haven't you? Mm-hmm. Now, 
obviously conditioning's been something that you've focused on with Tyson Fury. Um, do you see him? Be, he's gone twelve rounds twice. Do you see him going twelve rounds at a very, very fast pace against the top fighter? Yeah, look, you know, if he's not, if he can't go twelve rounds at any any pace, at a hell of a pace, then as far as I'm concerned, he's not ready to be linked. So unless he can do twelve rounds at any pace, then he's can't be, he's not he's not properly prepared. So you know, all professional fighters should be able to go the distance, come what may, no matter what. And you know, the best fighter should win on the pitch, not because they're only an ill prepared, because fitness and conditioning to me has nothing to do with the fighting, because that's a secondary. It's not an option. So to be in tip top shape is secondary for me, because none of my fighters are getting in the ring. Well, that's awesome. You ready? Mm-hmm. Now, we know the world title should be imminent, taking into, like, regardless of whether the Klitschko's fight him or not. What's your mindset? Are you in completely no rush whatsoever, or are you looking to get it in the next year or two? Um, just no second. It's, uh, it's difficult to say, you know, they're, um, they're not champions uh, for that many years for nothing, are they? But obviously, Tyson's coming and he can only fight in front of him. So, if we, uh, you know, God willing us to see that's pull up running up, then the next is pull up. And that'll put Tyson in the mandatory position. So hopefully for a shot at uh, Vladimir by the end of the year. Let's hope so. Now. Well, certainly, certainly uh, January, February next year. Yeah, it should be. It, lo- it looks that way, Peter. Now, I'm going to leave you both to it. Thank you very much. Thank Tyson for allowing me to talk to him, and um, I'll be in contact after the fight. No problem, and uh, thank you very much as always. Pleasure. Best of luck, Peter. Best of luck to Tyson also. Thank you very much. Cheers, now, boy.